we are moving into the fifth model let me recall the first model we discussed the basics of probability and the second model we discussed the random variable the third model we discussed the moments and inequalities and the fourth model we discussed the standard distributions both the discrete and continuous type now we move into the fifth module that is uh, random vectors in most of the random experiment you may have a omega in which you may able to create many random variables simultaneously and also sometimes uh, the interest will be finding the sum measures together or uh, given uh, one set of measures takes this value what could be the distribution of other random variable or sometimes uh, you may interested to find the distribution of uh, more than one random variable at the same time so till now we have discussed only one random variable then later we have discussed uh, a function of a random variable that means again as another one random variable there is a possibility you may need to study more than one random variables at the same time or simultaneously or together in that case you need a random vector when we use the word random vector that means uh, it is a n dimensional random variable that means uh, we put uh, n random variables together that we call it as a n dimensional random variables or random vector of size n that means each one is a random variable and we are studying n random variables together or jointly many real world problem you may need to study the distributions of uh, more than one random variable jointly therefore we need a random vector that means uh, whatever we have understood the concept of a random variable and their distributions and moments the same concept has to be extended from one dimensional to multi dimensional so whatever the calculus we have used calculus means uh, finding the integration or finding the derivative and so on whatever we have done the calculus part with the one dimensional variable or one variable now we have a n dimensional random variable so the corresponding uh, calculus of uh, several variable has to be used let me explain the, how the random vector coming to the picture the omega consists of uh, many samples it could be finite or countably infinite or uncountably many the random variable one random variable is defined as a x1 another random variable defined from the omega that is x2 like that uh, there are many more random variables defined in the omega that is a real valued function from omega to r satisfying the condition that is x inverse of uh, minus infinity to small x semi closed interval belonging to f then only the real valued function is a random variable that means uh, you have a probability space omega f p omega is a collection of all possible outcomes and f is the sigma field on omega and p is a set function satisfying the three conditions the kolmogorov axiomatic conditions therefore p is a probability so this is a probability space in this probability space x1 is defined the same probability space x2 is defined like that many more random variables are defined in the same omega now we are going to create a random vector by making a few random variables together or jointly that means if you go for x1 comma x2 together then this is called 
टू डायमेंशनल रैंडम वेरिएबल्स और इट्स अ रैंडम वेक्टर ऑफ साइज टू एक्स वन एंड एक्स टू दैट मीन्स द सेम ओमेगा x1 comma x2 is defined such that the possible values is going to be in the two dimensional plane this is x1 and this is x2 earlier the x1 is defined from omega to r now the x1 comma x2 is defined from omega to r cross r so again each one x1 is a random variable x2 is a random variable together we call it as a random vector of size 2 or two dimensional random variable the same way one can define n dimensional random variable x1 x2 and so on till x each one is a random variable therefore this is a n dimensional random variable in short r b s random variables that means uh, we can go for finding what is the joint distribution of n dimensional random variable x1 comma x2 so on x earlier we use the word distribution of x1 now we are studying the distribution of n random variable together or jointly therefore it's called a joint distribution of n dimensional random variables so first we can discuss what is the cdf cumulative distribution function if it is a discrete type random variable one can discuss what is the joint probability mass function if uh, each random variable is of the continuous type then one can study what is a joint probability density function of n dimension random variable initially we study all the random variables of the discrete type or all the random variables are of the continuous type later we will see one random variable of the discrete type and the other one is of the continuous type and so on that we will do it in the later so our interest is to find the joint distribution of n dimensional random variables in which each one is a random variable that means that satisfies the definition of random variable therefore uh, this is a n dimensional random variable first let us go for how to <coughs> give the definition of a joint cdf joint cdf of instead of going for the n dimensional random variable first we will restrict to the two dimensional random variable once we discuss the two dimensional random variable cdf then it is easy to visualize or easy to understand for uh, more than two dimensional random variable it is x1 comma x2 the joint cdf can be written as the two functions x1 comma x2 is nothing but the probability of capital x1 is less than or equal to small x1 capital x2 is less than or equal to small x2 both x1 and x2 lies between minus infinity to infinity similar way we have defined the cdf of a one dimensional random variable now we are defining the cdf of two dimensional random variable with the two variables so small x1 comma small x2 that is nothing but a probability of a capital x1 is less than or equal to small x1 and capital x2 is less than or equal to small x2 that is nothing but p of collection of w such that under the operation x1 
the w has to be less than or equal to x1 that means this value can lies between minus infinity to small x1 also the same w under the operation x2 it gives a value small x2 and the w is belonging to omega that means uh, we are collecting a few possible outcomes satisfying the condition under the operation uh, x1 it, it should give the value less than or equal to x1 under the operation of x2 it gives the values less than or equal to small x2 so we are collecting those possible outcomes then finding the probability and that probability of uh, this possible outcome satisfying this condition that is going to be the CDF at the point x1 comma x2 where small x1 can lie between minus infinity to infinity small x2 also lies between minus infinity to plus infinity. The collection of w such that this condition we can label this as the a suffix x1 comma x2 this is event because whenever you collect a few possible outcomes that is nothing but the event. So, the event a suffix x1 comma x2 that is a event that means the probability of event by using a Kolmogorov axiomatic definition probability of any event or p of any event always greater than or equal to 0 and p of omega is equal to 1 and p of union of a is that is equal to summation of p of a is as long as a is are mutually disjoint events. With the same logic the p of uh, any event getting from the different values of small x1 and x2 this is also going to satisfy the Kolmogorov axiomatic definition. Therefore, one can make uh, what are all the conditions or what are all the properties is going to be satisfied by this capital F. So, let me write down it satisfies it satisfies <coughs> the first condition the capital F of x1 comma x2 that is non decreasing and continuous from the right that means it is a right continuous with respect to with respect to each coordinate each coordinate that is x1 x2 it is a non decreasing as well as a continuous from right with respect to each coordinate that is the first point. Second point the limit of x1 tends to plus infinity x2 tends to plus infinity the CDF uh, x1 comma x2 limit x1 tends to plus infinity x2 tends to plus infinity f of x1 comma x2 is always 1 and the limit x2 tends to minus infinity of f of x1 comma x2 that is equal to 0 and the limit x1 tends to minus infinity f of x1 comma x2 that is also 0. When both becomes a positive infinity it becomes 1. When either one of them is minus infinity the limit x2 tends to minus infinity or limit x1 tends to minus infinity that function of x1 comma x2 that is going to be 0. The third point for every
a comma c and b comma d with a is lesser than b and c is lesser than d we have I can just uh, draw the diagram first then I can go for it that is easy. So, I can take a small box in which this is going to be A and this is going to be B and this is going to be C and this is going to be D correct. I can go for after drawing the diagram now I can go for f of b comma d minus f of b comma c minus f of a comma d plus f of a comma c which is greater than or equal to 0. So, the cross is going to have a positive symbol and the tick mark as a <coughs> negative symbol. That means, uh, f evaluated at b comma d minus f evaluated at a comma d and b comma c with the minus sign then plus f evaluated at a comma c that value has to be greater than or equal to 0. Whenever you have a two dimensional random variable OCDF always satisfies these three conditions. The third condition is a very important condition in the sense even you may have a real valued function with the two variables satisfying these two conditions may not be a CDF of a two dimensional random variable unless otherwise it satisfies the third condition. But if you have a two dimensional random variable, you will have a always a unique CDF with the two variables that satisfies all these three conditions. CDF of two dimensional random variable can be represented in the form of graphical. So, one can visualize the CDF in the form of x axis x 1 x 2 and this is going to be CDF of x 1 comma x 2. So, this is possible only for two dimensional x 1 is one random variable x 2 is another random variable. So, z axis that is a CDF of uh, x 1 comma x 2 whereas, uh, you cannot visualize uh, you cannot make a graphical representation of uh, more than two dimensional random variable. Let us go for uh, one simple example in which uh, we can conclude whether this is going to be a CDF or not. As an example, let x1, x2 be a two dimensional random variables with CDF x1, x2 that is either 0 when x 1 is less than 0 or x 1 plus x 2 is lesser than 1 or x 2 is lesser than 0. It takes a value 1 otherwise verify whether the capital F is going to be the CDF of a two dimensional random variable. That means, uh, this is a real valued function with the two variables whether this satisfies uh, the three properties which we have given. If all these three properties are satisfied, then you can conclude uh, this will be the CDF of uh, two dimensional random variable. You can easily verify the, the first two uh, properties uh, the function is a non decreasing as well as uh, continuous from the right. Similarly, you can easily verify the limit of uh, x 1 tends to plus infinity, x 2 tends to plus infinity that value is 1. 
either x1 is minus infinity or x2 is minus infinity, the limit is going to be 0, that also can be easily verified. We have to verify the third condition, that is uh, the <coughs> for any two points, uh, the CDF of the difference at uh, two points with a positive sign, two points with a negative sign has to be greater than or equal to 0. For example, you do it with the probability of uh, x lies between x1 lies between 1 third to 1 comma x2 is lies between 1 third to 1. If you compute this probability that is nothing but f at the point 1 comma 1 minus f at the point 1 comma 1 third I am using the same property minus f one third comma one plus f one third comma one third. If you substitute the value f of one comma one, that is one. f of one comma one third, that is again one. f of one third comma one, again one f of 1 third comma 1 third that is uh, 0 and this value is going to be minus 1 which is uh, not greater than or equal to 0. So, for any arbitrary points uh, this uh, third property has to be satisfied. So, since the third property is not satisfied you can conclude uh, this f is not a CDF of a, the random vector x1 comma x2 or the two dimensional random variables x1 comma x2. We will give some example in which uh, that is going to be CDF. So, example 2, let x1 comma x2 be a two dimensional random variables with the, the function f of x 1 comma x 2 is 1 minus e power minus lambda x 1 minus e power minus mu times x 2 plus e power minus lambda x 1 minus mu x 2. So, this is going to be the value when both uh, x1 and uh, x2 lies between 0 to infinity, otherwise uh, it is 0. We can verify whether uh, this is going to be the CDF of two dimensional random variable. By seeing the function you can easily say when x1 and x2 is a uh, positive infinity it becomes 1, you either uh, x 1 or x 2 is going to be minus infinity that is going to be 0 and it is a non decreasing function and uh, continuous from the right therefore, the properties 1 and 2 are easily satisfied. For different values uh, one can able to verify the third property also will be satisfied. Therefore, one can conclude this is going to be the CDF of a two dimensional random variable. So, I am not giving the proof of the third property, but that can be verified we can conclude this is going to be the CDF of a two dimensional random variable. Suppose uh, we know the CDF of uh, x1 comma x2, one can able to find uh, 
the CDF of uh, any one random variable. That is, uh, one can find the CDF of uh, random variable x1 as a function of small x1. That is nothing but the probability of x1 less than or equal to small x1. That is same as probability of x1 less than or equal to small x1 which intersect all the union of x2 less than or equal to small x2 for all possible values of x2. That is same as the probability of union of all possible values of small x2 x1 is less than or equal to x1 and x2 is less than or equal to small x2. That is same as the p of union is nothing but limit x2 tends to infinity p of x1 less than or equal to small x1 capital X2 less than or equal to small x2 that is same as limit x2 tends to infinity capital F of x1 with x2. That means uh, if you know the CDF of uh, x1 comma x2 by taking limit of uh, the other variable tends to plus infinity that will give the CDF of the other random variable. Similarly, similarly the CDF of uh, the random variable x2 as a function of a small x2 that is nothing but uh, limit x1 tends to plus infinity of uh, CDF uh, evaluated at the point x1 comma x2. So, this is valid for a two dimensional random variable. So, this concept can be extended to n dimensional random variable. That means, uh, suppose I denote capital X as a n dimensional random vector instead of again and again writing a n dimensional random variable I can write capital X with the CDF capital F that means uh, F also has a uh, n variables then we can find uh, the CDF of uh, any one random variable. Suppose I want uh, jth random variable. Suppose I want to find out the CDF of jth random variable that is nothing but uh, limit x1 tends to infinity limit x2 tends to infinity. I assume that uh, j is uh, in between 1 to n. Therefore, limit x j minus 1 tends to infinity, limit x j plus 1 tends to infinity and so on, limit x n tends to infinity of capital F which has the elements, just I will write down in the next line x 1 comma x 2 x n. So, this is a way one can get the CDF of a one dimensional random variable from the CDF of n dimensional random variable where j can be 1, 2 and so on till n. In this exercise I have not said whether the random variable is of the discrete type or continuous type or mixed type. So, based on the 
each random variable or of the discrete continuous are mixed one can discuss the joint probability mass function or joint probability density function and so on. So, at present uh, we do not know what is the type of uh, each random variable therefore, we stopped it uh, at the CDF of the n dimensional random variable. Once we know the type of each random variable then one can go for studying the probability mass function jointly probability density function jointly that is going to be the second lecture.